All right, so Richie Jacobs. He asked a uh, very has a very interesting comment here. He says, "I remember being told by someone, maybe Pat Robertson, that the thousand years came after Jesus comes back, but before judgment." He said it was so Jesus could show that everybody the right way to rule the world or something like that. I can see now that's ridiculous. The thousand years has to be now, but is it a literal thousand years? And the obvious answer to that question is no. Um, we could go to um, let's see. Let me think about this. Okay, so, but of the day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay, so just by that single verse, we know that the thousand years cannot be uh, literal in the sense that it'll be exactly 1,000 years and the end will come. The thousand years of Revelation 20 is a time period from the time of Jesus to the time of his return to the time of baby Jesus to the time that he returns this is a special and unique time period all right and um, so let's look a little more at this if we could here um, I, I looked at this looked this up and it just what is the purpose of a thousand year reign of Christ um, you know, the thing is, the Bible never talks about a thousand year reign of Christ, but let's just take a look real quick. The purpose of the thousand year reign is to fulfill various promises God made to the world. Some of these promises called covenants. A covenant and a promise is the same thing. Were given specifically to Israel. Others were given to Jesus, the nations of the world, and creation. Jesus' thousand year reign will be a time of promises kept. Okay, so um, so this this is evidence that these people are saying that Israel, 1948 Israel is um, God's holy people, the nation of God. That's what they say. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So back in the Old Testament, we, we know about how God had his people. <clears throat> and they were um, a nation to themselves, if you will. And they were gathered together into you know, one land and or to one country or uh, various countries, so forth. Now, but they were a group of people. Now, Jesus comes and so the God was accessible or overwatched, if you will. The people of God, um, this this nation. So now, um, the. Holy Spirit is available to all that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's no longer just about the Jews. It's available for Jew and Gentile. It's available for everybody. All right. So and we can go to uh, and we see confirmation of this everywhere. Really, um. First Peter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen generation he's talking about Christians he's not talking about Christ rejecting Jews he's not talking about 1948 Israel he's talking about Christians people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who are born of the Spirit of God you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation you're a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, 
this person who is writing this article here no understanding at all. He still thinks that Christ rejecting Jews from a 1948 created Israel is the holy people of God, the holy nation of God. That's just a fundamental error, if you will. I mean, it's it's a lack of understanding. And so he goes into these promises. Um, I don't want to go over all these. Be a complete waste of time because the premise is wrong. There is no thousand-year reign of Christ. But if you were to go over all these, you would see that there is nothing, um, nothing of, um, oh, nothing of any difference, if you will, of the promises that Jesus fulfilled. He fulfilled during his time, and the promises that will be completed upon his return these are the thousand year this idea of a thousand year period is irrelevant it, there's no distinction between how do I explain this so let me find an example right, new covenant other promises okay Okay, animals and earth would be restored to peace and prosperity. People will be freed from disease. These two will be fulfilled. All right, so this here, all this happens after the return of Jesus. Uh, it's not specific for this idea. Well, uh, for a thousand years, the animals and the earth will be restored to peace and prosperity. And that diseases, will, or people will be freed from diseases. This is not only for this thousand year period. Just like what we read in Revelation 21, when there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death. This is not only this thousand year period. In fact, it's not even part of that thousand year period. It's after the thousand year period. So that means when Jesus comes, the thousand years are finished and our the new world the new heaven new earth now begins so technically these verses that he's referring to in Ezekiel and Isaiah these are after the thousand year period after the return of Jesus after we are resurrected after we are um, uh, circumcised, if you will, from the f for good, from the flesh, forever. All right. So this is the new heaven and the new earth. All right. The main purpose of Jesus' thousand-year reign is to fulfill the prophecies given to 1948 Israel and the promises made to Jesus, the nations, and the whole earth. God's covenants were voluntary and one-sided. He promised He would bless. 1948 Israel and restore the world in specific ways and he will right, so the this world is coming to an end he I think it probably would be better worded if, they, if it said restore the earth because there will be a new earth a new heaven a new earth so anyways let's get into this um, thousand year reign of Christ there is no mention of thousand year reign of Christ a thousand years they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is talking about people living and reigning with Christ. This is a key phrase right there, with Christ. All right. And shall reign with him, meaning Christ, a thousand years. So we are reigning with Christ right now. If you say, well, you don't reign with Christ right now, then how can you say you're saved? Because Jesus clearly says that when we are born of the Spirit of God, He is, abides in us, and we abide in Him. Therefore, we reign with Him. Maybe I should have done this different here. Hold on a second. Uh, that's 
go. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. So we could go to, oh, let's do it this way. And another point here is that Jesus reigns forever. What do you think he reigns for a thousand years? And nope, oh, that's it. I'm done. I'm tired of this business. And he gives up the business and then gives it to you. Is that what you think? No, that's not the case at all. Revelation 5 and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Talking about right now. There should be no confusion about this one. We are, and like I pointed out in 1 Peter 2, we are royal priesthood. We are royalty. We are kings and priests of God. We reign on earth. Talking about right now, present tense, today. When Jesus comes, that's it. It's the end of the world. <laughs> Daniel talks about the end of the world. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. All talk about the end of the world. So also in the book of Revelation, talking about the end of the world. And none of these conflict with one another. They're all saying the same thing. Just giving us different angles so we might understand a little clearer, a little easier, and so forth. Instead of making it easier, people want to make it more complicated, confusing, and nonsensical. And that's what we get with these people that say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not in the Bible. Not mentioned anywhere. And so now take a look at this. You could do this any, any day, every day, and it's nonstop. One thousand year reign of Christ. These people are not regarding the Bible. They're regarding teachers. Because you don't see a thousand year reign of Christ in the Bible anywhere. It's not in Revelation 20. I already pointed that out. You got two mentions here. And they were both talking about the people reigning with Christ. We reign with Christ right now. It's no different. It's a fundamental misunderstanding. And so on one hand they gotta say, well Jesus comes back, but it's not the end of the world. Which is basically saying Jesus lied in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Because he's saying when he comes back, it's the end of the world. Yeah, that, there should be no mistake about that. Even in Revelation 20, it has the return of Jesus. And I saw a great, a great white throne, that's Jesus. And this parallels Matthew 24, 31. That's him coming back. It's judgment day. All right, so all of us first, and Paul talks about it, we are first the dead in Christ are lifted up, and then those of us that are alive, which remain, shall be lifted up with them. We shall be caught up in the air with the Lord, and our enemy will be at our feet. And this goes all the way back to Genesis 3. It's mentioned all throughout the Bible how our enemy is going to be at our feet. Or at the, more specifically, at the Lord's feet, and He will stomp out the enemy forever. All right, this and this is very simple stuff. But you look here, like at YouTube, these people, non-stop, premillennialism. I can't say that word. Premillennialism. I don't, I don't even know what that word is. What will it be like during the millennial reign of Christ? Well, we're in it right now. Why don't you wake up? <laughs> really a thousand years of Christ reign oh, frozen foods love it all right so there is no mention of Christ's reign right. I don't know where it will. They, these people are getting it from I'm not sure if I got the right verse yeah these people are getting it from teachers. They're not getting it from the Bible. So Luke 1, verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. How can you say Jesus has a thousand year period where he reigns when he reigns forever? It's nonsensical. You have to take your magic marker and erase that from the Bible right there. 
All right. And the thousand year reign of Christ. There is no mention of right Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. And this guy's brilliant right here. Derek Jester. The thousand year reign was 42 months from 66 to 70 AD. And that's, again, this is why I say 70 AD has no biblical value whatsoever. 100% imaginary. Nothing of any significance happened as far as it relates to the Bible in 70 AD. All right, but the, these preterists, they want to say, what? Oh, the resurrection's already passed and overthrow the faith of some. Here we go again, Millennial Part 3. Jesus reign, Jesus 1000 year reign on earth. Again, Matthew, or I'm sorry, Revelation 20 makes no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's not there. A thousand year reign of Christ. Look at this, was eight days ago. All these. Just non stop, non stop. False doctrine teachers. False teachers. There is no thousand year reign of Christ. It's not in the Bible. Not in Revelation 20. Not anywhere else. And their idea that they're pushing directly conflicts with Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And um, in fact, you could argue that it, it conflicts with Daniel 12. It can, and that would conflict with the rest of Revelation. It conflicts with the entire Bible. It's not there. There is simply no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. Not there. And you, you see how many people are just teaching this nonsense. It's a fantastic idea. It sells movies, books, and they produce TV series that's on the idea, but it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Anyway, so let's do it this way. All right, so we read about the devil, Satan, being bound a thousand years. So when the thousand years is up, that is when the devil, what's he do? He gathers together the unsaved and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. This is when our enemy is at our feet. Just like we read in Genesis 3 and all throughout the Bible until he has made his enemies his footstool right so our enemy will be at our feet <clears throat> excuse me they'll be at our feet and then uh, they will be destroyed now we see many examples of this so that's the purpose of um, Satan being bound and then being loosed at the end of the thousand years that's the whole context of what that's talking about and right, when he's loosed out of his prison we are this is when we are lifted up in the air. Satan's loosed out of his prison and he gathers the unsaved. It's not talking about saved people. This is talking about unsaved people. All right. So then we go to four, five, and six. Because three, let's go two, three, and seven are about Satan. So four, five, six. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Think about this. Uh, whether you or somebody you loved, that they were uh, a believer in Jesus Christ. They were born of God. They were saved. And they died. Um. They lived not again until the thousand years are finished. And when the thousand years are over, Jesus comes in the clouds. They are resurrected. We are all resurrected. And uh, we, li you know, we live forever. So um, it, it's completely consistent with the entire Bible. All right. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such that the second death has no power. 
but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We have part in this resurrection, okay, right now. Because right now we are priests of God and of Christ. And we reign with Christ right now because Christ is in us. We abide in him and he abides in us. There should be no doubt. It's very simple. Okay. And of course, uh, you know, if you are born of God, the second death has no power over you. Jesus says you shall never die. Whoever lives and believes in me shall. Let's do it this way. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over you right now. All right, so I'll tell you what, I get fired up about this stuff. All right, and then verse six, blessed, or no, blessed. Um, I'm sorry, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection are those of us that are resurrected into our everlasting bodies our everlasting we're, we're going from an, uh, in we're going from a perishable flesh to an imperishable flesh if you will uh, we're going from a corrupted body into a cor incorruptible body all right so I mean, that's the promise that Jesus has made that God has made for us since the beginning that we shall have everlasting life where there's no more pain no more sorrow no more crying no more death right all these things will be former things right all right and so uh, you know I want to get into this more but I think that's it for now specifically there is no mention of um, a thousand year period after the return of Jesus Christ it's just not there there's no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years as I pointed out to you he reigns forever right and if you read Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 you'll see there is no mention of this idea that well I'm gonna come and reign for a thousand years and then what happens his reigns over no no, it, it's not there in the Bible at all, but it makes for great movies. Well, Hollywood loves that stuff, huh? The idea of, uh, you know, a thousand year period of, what, zombie land? <laughs> I mean, it makes for a great zombie movie, but it's not reality. All right. When Jesus, he, he's asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And when he comes... And his angels gather together the elect. It is the end of the world. All right, that's the end of the world when he returns. And he returns. We can parallel that with verse 11. That's the end of the world right there. And it's coming. There are no second chances. Remember that. If, if you're not saved now, this is your chance, your last chance your only chance. Jesus is your only chance. 